Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today as we stand at the crossroads of two dynamic worlds, the exhilarating universe of online gaming and the intricate realms of taxation, both within the framework of our today's engaging webinar and panel presentation around key implications and impact of the recent GST amendments as decoded for the online gaming industry. By way of introduction, my name is Krishna Narora. I'm a partner with Grant Thornton Bharat LLP, and I'm specializing in tax, finance, and regulatory consulting. And it's my distinct privilege to take you through this enlightening session as your moderator. Over the next one hour, we'll be navigating the complex pathways of taxation on online gaming in India. As we are already aware, the recent development that had put the entire online gaming industry into a rethinking and replanning mode was the imposition of 28% GST on full face value of betting, coupled with relevant amendments in terms of widening the taxation base to complete landscape of online gaming. Despite representations and appeals from various quarters, the government seems to be standing firm in its view and decision to expand the tax base, as well as bringing the 28% GST rate at par on all sorts of online gaming activities, whether they are termed as game of chance, or game of skill. This move has also sparked widespread concerns among industry stakeholders about the potential consequences on the sector growth, investment opportunities, employment prospects, and above all, the immediate impact on business and on consumers. With this perplexity in mind of our today's session, we shall be diving deep into the realms of online gaming and related taxation while navigating through the three important aspects, namely, the evolving time landscape of tax regulations that apply to the innovative industry of online gaming, recent GST amendments shaping the tax implications on this industry, and last but not the least, the key impact that these changes bring in on the prevailing businesses and the areas that merit consideration from an overall adaptation, continuity, and growth standpoint. So without further ado, let's welcome our panelists and embark on this insightful journey. Joining me on this virtual stage are some brilliant minds and industry professionals for discussion on this multifaceted dimension of the topic of online gaming and its impact. Mr. Ronald Landers, CEO, Online All, All India Gaming Federation. My colleagues at GT Bharat, Mr. Dharmendra Jam, Partner Business Consulting with domain and industry expertise in this industry. Karan Kakkar, Partner Tax Finance and Regulatory consulting with technical expertise on GST. I, on behalf of my colleagues at Grant Thornton Bharat, humbly thank uh, Mr. Ronald Landers to have taken out time from his busy schedule and agreeing to share his valuable insights on this significant change. Each of our esteemed panelists bring wealth of experience, knowledge, and insights on the table, and I'm thankful to have them share their expertise on this topic with this audience. Before we begin, requesting all participants and members to post any queries during the course of the session in the QA section at the box which you can see below your screens. We would be happy to respond to your queries during the course and in the QA session due scheduled during the end of the technical discussion. And together, we shall make this session more engaging and meaningful. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for being with us today. Together, let's level up our understanding on this amended taxation regime on online gaming. I would now request my colleague Karan to throw some light upon the key technical developments for the industry from a GST perspective, followed by a brief industry perspective to be shared by my colleague Dharminder before we get on to the panel discussion. Over to you, Karan. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Krishan, uh, you know, for setting the stage for this uh, important topic and important development under GST for uh, the entire industry, uh, you know, which is online gaming industry. Uh, so I'll just, you know, uh, keep it very simple, uh, you know, for everybody to understand, you know, while uh, there is a lot of content on these slides, I'll not read by that. I'll give a background why, what manifested and, you know, what happened, uh, you know, why these all changes were there. So, you know, obviously the uh, gaming industry has been seen as a sin, sin industry for services, uh, you know, by the uh, our uh, government and the finance minister uh, herself. And that's where, you know, the deliberation started uh, that, you know, what should be the rate of taxes, but it should not be akin to 
the essential services which are primarily under 18% of a bracket of gst rate so that's where all the deliberation started so for that uh, the group of ministers uh, you know were uh, formed to address the uh, taxation issues for all kind of uh, you know gaming industry including casinos horse racing uh, horse racing online gaming etc so you know the group of uh, uh, members which was formed uh, comprised of various states uh, chief ministers and the finance ministers including meghalaya west bengal goa uttar pradesh etc so you know these group of members were to discuss you know what should be the rate and what should be the valuation what should be you know to be adopted to levy gst in this industry so you know they deliberated and uh, you know out of the agenda before them was to you know see that you know it should be at par with uh, you know lottery because lottery was any base any base being taxed at 100% there was a separate rule for that so to bring everybody online and of course you know there had been recent uh, uh, court rulings you know which uh, led to a lot of litigation in this industry you know whether it is a you know what should be taxed as a, a game of chance or a game of skill you know there that differentiation was already creating a lot of uh, litigation around that to come out of that uh, situation and uh, to have some clarity on this industry this group of ministers you know recommended to the gst council that a rate of 28% should be you know applied to uniformly to all these uh, specified services when i say specified services it is casinos horse racing online gaming lottery and betting these are five specified you know services which they were alluding to uh to uh, you know charge 28% now comes the bigger question what should be the valuation so they came out with the valuation and that was again you know a cue was taken from various other countries how they are doing it globally uh, you know they evaluated uk austria malaysia australia etc you know where the gst or the vat in those countries was uh, is being imposed on the gross gaming revenue so that is where the cue was taken okay we would also want to recommend at the full value of consideration which is including including of a plat platform fee as well as you know prize pool you know what is contributed by the player so that is how all these recommendations were panned out uh, you know by the group of ministers placed before the gst council so in the gst council in the first uh, you know when it was placed uh, you know these were the recommendations in the second report by you know uh, these people there was no consensus between these members of various states so they asked gst council to decide on their own and you know what was decided uh, and what was recommended by the gst council is that it should be 18 uh, 28% of tax on the full face value of the bets which are being placed so that is that is what culminated into you know the gst cgst and igst amendments and there have been a lot of uh, you know amendments in this which we'll be you know discussing in the subsequent slides also uh, you know what has changed so the issues which i already spoke the earlier today you know what was happening before this amendment uh, had come in uh, the gaming industry was only charging gst on the platform fee or the actual rate fee you know uh, and of uh, there was a differentiation between a game of skill and a game of chance and uh, there were two different rates being applied uh, there was no uniformity it was 18% and 28% and that's how the recommendations had come uh, to levy and keep every of such kind of services at par <clears throat> and what was also clarified which is extremely important in the uh, 51st uh, you know gst council meeting that okay that we charge you on a full face value however the amount which arises out of, out of the winnings of the players from the previous game should not be included in the value that has also been recommended so one thing to be noted is that all these are gst amendments in the act which has happened there has not been any notification so far you know we are sitting as uh, as on today there has not been any notifications to give the effect of 28% and the valuation so we the, uh, you know uh, what has been told by the finance minister that all these recommendations which has taken or the uh, has uh, has taken place should come into effect from 1st october 23 so the industry you know should be preparing uh, for uh, you know this to happen because sooner than later it will happen 
so that's where you know uh, we will also keep uh, have uh, uh, you know we will have to watch out for these notifications to come in what exactly is written on these notifications to give the effect to this so which automatically means what happens to the past period so probably you know that also will be you know discussing in the uh, you know subsequent uh, uh, you know session uh, as we go along in this webinar <clears throat> next slide please so these are the key amendments what has happened uh, so online gaming was already a limb coming under oidar services oidar services are nothing but online information and database access or retrieval services so that was one of the part where you know this online gaming was anyways covered so what they have done is uh, as per this amendment they have defined what is online gaming it is a offering of a game you know through a electronic network which includes online money gaming so now there is a clear distinction between online money gaming and normal online gaming so when i say online gaming what comes to my mind is you know a game like chess ludo where we do not expect any money uh, or any winnings so to say uh, you know which will come to the player that is normal you know uh, online uh, game uh, any anybody plays so that is a difference between a uh, online gaming and online money gaming is where there is expectation of a outcome or a performance or some winnings in terms of money so that money can either be in currency or it can be even in bdas so virtual digital assets so this is something they have picked up from the income tax act that is aligned you know uh, any winnings or any dealings in virtual digital assets is going to be <clears throat> you know at par with any consideration what any player would have any, uh, you know uh, deposited uh, for playing this games so which means there is a clear distinction of online money gaming and you know whatever today we are discussing is primarily going to be impacting online money gaming because the 28% is coming on online money gaming and as part of the actionable claims under schedule 3 of gst act you know they have clearly told that any actionable actionable claim excluding specified services you know will be uh, treated to be a supply under gst so specified services i already mentioned it is betting it is casinos it is horse racing it is online money gaming and it is uh, 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 yeah it is a uh, lottery uh, the uh, last one which was anyways there <clears throat> so that is where uh, you know the distinction has come what they have also told is that there is going to be mandatory registration you know which is required you know by any person who is organizing or arranging these services so there are two questions which come you know which uh, erupts immediately out of this is that one there is a game owner one there is a platform who is hosting that game so the registration requirement is on the platform who is really hosting and organizing these games to be played you know by the players uh, online so the game owner and the platform owner can be same in that case he needs to take the registration in case the game owner is different and a platform owner is different the the gst liability is casted for the registration purposes and depositing gsts on the platform owner who is hosting that game for that game owner so that is a clear dis, uh, you know distinction what they have uh, uh, brought as uh, you know in the amendment and also in the mandatory registration for overseas you know companies foreign companies also they have told it is mandatory to take you know registration in uh, india if they do not have any presence they need to appoint a tax agent or a tax representative to take the registration in india and do the compliances for gst and there is also you know a consequence if somebody does not uh, do that or fails to take registration and do the compliances uh, in india for uh, this online money gaming the access to the portal will be immediately blocked by the government if they get to know that somebody is not complying with gst so that's a severe consequence on the uh, you know especially on the foreign players uh, foreign companies who are hosting these uh, you know online money gaming uh, in india uh, next slide please <clears throat> so we'll quickly discuss you know uh, we've uh, made the illustration very simple illustration what is the likely impact under gst for this industry uh, if you see on the right hand side of your screen you know we've tried to you know make a comparison between what was there prior to recommendation by gst council now what will happen if you know 28% on the full value uh, gst if it is applied so if you see the calculations uh, the 
there is a significant increase in gst levy which is you know almost you know it comes to 1400 times a uh, 14 times of you know what is being uh, charged today because today like i said gst is at 18% only on the platform fee and uh, you know as per the recommendation it is going to be 28% on the full face value of the bets placed so really the impact what we see it is not because of rate change of 10% it is on the valuation which is really hitting the industry or Uh, the levy of gst goes up rest everything remains same the tds will be collected on uh, you know under income tax act on the winnings by the players which anyways was there the, the industry is already adopted to that practice so nothing changes only the change what is happening where you see on the screen is on the gst levy which has significantly gone up and on the left hand side it is nothing a summary of what i have told you already that there is of course increase in gst levy there will be a decrease in the net winning amount for the players because obviously the gst goes in uh, as part of the uh, you know bets placed there are mandatory requirements to take registration and do compliances under gst both for domestic as well as foreign players <clears throat> and there will be you know the uh, access to the platforms will be blocked if the compliances are not adhered to so these are clearly very very important changes the industry should look into we have to you know plan our uh, strategy what is going to happen and you know we we'll understand from the experts you know what they believe uh, should be the uh, you know course forward so from uh, you know uh, at this uh, stage i you know uh, end my uh, you know slides and i hand it over to uh, dharmend we will you know take you Uh, you know uh, and give you some flavor of industry uh, uh, you know what will happen the remain over to you thanks karan so i'll share the uh, kind of incremental point of view of on uh, what will happen or what is happening uh, from the industry point of view so could you move to the slide yeah so actually the if we see the impact uh, of this regime would be both on the supply side in terms of uh, uh the gaming companies established and the new uh, gaming companies how will they behave to this gst regime will they be able to uh survive uh, in terms of impact on the profits uh, or how will they sustain themselves and in terms of demand side uh, if uh, gst is levied uh, to the customer so how the demand will be impacted uh, from customer side it is important to understand that uh that this increased tax regime if it is passed on to customer there will be uh, impact uh on the on the customer side in terms of uh because the the amount which will be available to play will be significantly reduced as as karan mentioned so so it will be important to understand that how these companies will innovate in terms of business model whether this increase impact of gst on the platform fee which was earlier uh, uh, these companies were making uh, will they remain uh, profitable uh, for the longer term if uh, and and how will they actually implement this uh, on the apps they may try to uh, absorb the impact and may not pass or partially pass this to the consumer side uh, Our our, uh, our representative Roland will also share his point of view on this. So now investor sentiments. It's important that first of all earlier in the year the IT rules were amended to to uh, kind of uh, regulate or have a structure around the gaming sector. Now this how will the investor sentiments will be impacted? This is this is really important to understand. and uh, investors were really uh, delighted once this uh, was there was a clarity in terms of regulation by ministry of electronics and it but this increased tax regime impact on profitability will the investment flow which was 2.8 billion in last 5 years as per uh, uh, invest india will this kind of momentum uh, be continued uh, that's important to understand and also uh, the new age companies versus the established players will there be a regime to uh, consolidate 
uh, and smaller player may not be able to sustain for long for low profits or 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 reduced number of uh, customers unless they innovate uh, by implementing the uh, new uh, uh, sources of fund that customer may add there are innovative uh, because I'll, I'll i'll take an analogy uh, from the payment sector in payment sector you in upi there was zero mdr uh, to be charged uh, to consumer and to merchants but the UPI industry sustained by developing an innovative business model. And UPI grew at, at uh, almost 70% year on year. So it's important to understand that whether the innovative customer engagement models will be developed to ensure that customers do not move out of the uh, online gaming. So it's, it's, and now, if the domestic uh, charging happens, if there are any international or offshore uh, gaming companies as a competition, how the impact of, of, of those uh, or shifting of this uh, business from domestic company to international companies? Because this is this will be an interesting, interesting uh, shift that, that may be observed in, in, in near future. And in terms of... Uh, in, in terms of compliance and, and reporting and uh, changing the systems, I believe that it will be uh, the GST calculations will change. The reporting earlier also there was uh, the GST was reported and, and with the new regime, the reporting will be slightly changed uh, as, per, as per the new regime. And in terms of this last point, in terms of marketing, the map of efforts or the marketing or customer acquisition which the gaming industry was was doing before this regime will it be continued at the same pace that will be interesting to observe go to next slide please now possible area of innovation in terms of uh, i told you like uh, upi sector or payment sector they innovated they did not charge on the UPI, but they are they're developing business models so that they can uh, apply fees on those layered or, or derived uh, services which on which they can charge. Similarly, in, in uh, gaming, uh, so it will be important that customers are uh, encouraged to add money and whatever money is added, uh, they will be engaged more so that the the added money is consumed fast. That's important. And those tactics will be uh, applied in a, to, to consume that uh, added fund in a, in a shorter time frame. Now, awareness. If, a, if this uh, additional GST is passed to consumer, it's important that customers are also aware. If it is passed, uh, customers should be made aware about this new tax regime and how taxes being deducted and uh, it's important that it is done well in advance rather than once it is applied so the flow and ui and ux should be uh, very clear in, uh, in demonstrating that that's important uh, uh, the communication will play a critical role and uh, the in terms of instant gratification if it is observed that that majority portion of the customers, once they win in any of the game, they would like to take out funds immediately. Now, will that be continued because with a lower amount of platform fee? The instant gratification uh, behavior should it be continued to be encouraged by these uh, payment uh, by these gaming companies because. It's important that the, the gratification amount stays with the, with the gaming company so that they can earn uh, on, on top of that. These are the possible area of innovation we will we'll further talk uh, during the panel discussion that how this industry will change its behavior to sustain its growth in comparison to the other uh, gaming uh, leaders uh, in terms of countries uh, and and how will it will india continue to be the leader in terms of growth of uh, online gaming
yeah i think uh, over to you uh, krishn uh, for thanks thanks. Panel. thanks thanks darminder and thanks uh, you know karan for those uh, insights on the business front and on the you know the technical changes with karan talked about i think uh, you know I'll, i'll bring in the panel uh, back in here and uh, i was I, i was waiting to kind of ask uh, ronald to come in and you know when darminder was talking about the business impact i think uh, there is a fair bit of uh, uh, insight which uh, probably ronald will be able to share considering that you know he has been the ceo of the all india gaming federation so ronald uh, the first question for you uh, is that you know you you heard about the fm and what we talked about and current talked about and darminder talked about the speech you know it it was categorically mentioned in the council uh, meeting that uh, the agenda was not to kill the industry you know all sorts of business have to be kept alive now you know what is your view of that need to kind of increase the gst to 20% at par for game of chance and game of skill and what are those top four or five items that probably industries really looking at in terms of this impact and the preparation to manage this change yeah thanks uh, krishan for having me uh, on this uh, panel today uh, happy to be a part of the gt uh, webinar on on online gaming and the implications of the new uh, gst regime so i think uh, you know on the positive side uh, obviously uh, industry looks at looks at this as a you know as a culmination of the overhang that has been there on on as far as gst rate and valuation is concerned since 2017 since the inception of uh, of gst uh, and that adding to you know the uh, the clarity on regulation through the uh, online gaming rules i think uh, make for you know uh, make for uh, lack of ambiguity at least in these two areas which which are very important from various stakeholder perspectives starting with the you know the investor to the customer and and also the gaming platforms in between having said that i think uh, from a industry perspective uh, the two parts of the gst being rate and valuation the rate was never an issue i think uh, you know the movement from 18 to 28 uh, was acceptable and also uh, you know that upside of 55 odd percent was something that you know was not a contentious issue uh, the valuation however becomes significant uh when you look at the upside and uh, you know if you want to draw a parallel between online gaming and what any other industry would probably have to undergo so when the movement happens from the valuation methodology of a platform fee to the deposit amount the upside uh, is a 400 is a whopping 400% now that kind of uh, you know upside is uh, you know uh, for all of us to to imagine is difficult to to uh, you know to absorb uh, into uh, into the ecosystem and hence obviously there's going to be uh, there's going to be impact so so uh, a 400% upside i think is uh, uh, you know i think for any industry would be extremely difficult uh, and so is the case with the online gaming industry now what will happen is if you look at the ecosystem so you have at the outset i would say the game developer so what would happen is uh, entrepreneurs and startup uh, you know enthusiasts would then redeploy some of their profits towards development of games now that would have a impact obviously so uh, less of you know uh, uh, revenues going towards the development side then you come to the customer obviously for the gamer slash customer also there is going to be an impact uh, and coming to the gaming platform obviously uh, as dharmender alluded to uh, you know one would tend to uh, believe in absorbing that cost and not passing it on and hence there's going to be you know impact on 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 the on the gaming platform and uh, obviously from the uh, from the uh, department side the objective is uh, you know very simple to to generate more revenues for the exchequer uh, but one has to also look at you know uh, the diminishing uh, you know this curve what we call the copenhagen curve which may kick in at some point in time uh, but i think across the ecosystem there will be impact so uh, i think you know entrepreneurs who would invest into innovation for example as one of uh, you know whether it is game development 
or you know launching uh, new formats that i think would would see a significant uh, you know impact and uh, some companies as you would have seen in the media reports also uh, have reengineered their businesses are in the process of doing so uh, this would include you know certain uh, news of layoffs and uh, also uh, you know some smaller companies also closure the news i have also read that there is you know uh, some closures also so all of this uh, you know i think are some of the top uh, uh, impact points that would come into uh, play uh, given that the uh, new regime kicks in uh, post uh, 1st october as announced uh, but we are awaiting the rules as as mentioned earlier right right i mean the uh, sorry ronald that's a fair point and uh, you know I, I i completely agree on the fact that the clarity on the rate was not that big an issue but as you mentioned about the impact on the whole ecosystem i think that's the larger one to look at and how you really the spend on innovation development manpower skilling etc is looked at today i think that's something which probably will be very very important to kind of look at what kind of impact will have on the overall ecosystem and then from that perspective you know how much of that benefit will ultimately kind of be retained and what will be passed on is something which will be very important and and that will define the way this industry will operate and you know whoever does that you know and in in times to come however fast you do it the better it is but i think the the part which still requires certain part of uh, brainstorming is this that how do you really measure this impact in terms of retaining it or passing it on and what will be the customer retention in, you know uh, strategy that that is probably what was going to also happen if at all the rate is actually the any impact is passed on and that's what the minister was alluding to from that side you know innovation and strategies will also have to be looked at so so you mentioned and we know that you know this timeline of uh, 1st of october is uh, you know seems to be very very close but you know a lot of not notifications have not been out yet uh, the planning which or if it all has to happen has to happen very quickly but uh, what what are the what are the things you really see the government should be clarifying for the industry at this stage apart from the extension which probably might be on the cards for the time which we have on hand yeah so uh, we have uh, you know expectedly uh, requested uh, for an extension uh, given that uh, you know there's so many uh, changes that uh, processes would need to undergo some of which uh, include uh, uh, you know restructuring of the uh, financial systems accounting yeah. processes uh, business models programming changes so all of these uh, there will be changes and uh, you know dharmender is better equipped to to detail that out but you know in the wallets and payment systems there would need to be uh, you know changes revisions of the invoicing models right reconciliation of the you know turnover uh, the need to account for the transition from the existing platform fee methodology to the deposit uh, basis now companies are also working towards you know achieving stability within their own operations uh, and they now look look at what probably you know was in one of the slides on the uh, on the uh, on the marketing side right so for example these companies uh, and as a category online gaming as you would know is one of the largest uh or the biggest uh, sponsorship slash advertising as a category on on uh, a lot of the sporting events including live sport in particular and so what will happen is they have existing contracts in place with some of the large digital digital platforms as well as you know the the other media platforms and so you know there will be renegotiation uh, on those uh, commitments and contracts and uh, and lastly obviously you know uh, there will be also stabilizing their internal workforce uh, yeah. and, you know in the view of this entire overall reengineering so that the impact of the next 10 to 12 months uh, you know would have to be undertaken now and some of them have already moved uh, faster of the uh, you know uh, of the runway to do that so i think uh, these are some of the high level uh, you know items that would come to my mind when one one looks at uh, you know changes that would come into play absolutely uh, ronald and i think very very uh, you know while very briefly put but very accurately put in terms of the areas of uh, you know coverage and impact which any player today would be watching out for and you know looking at and i'll bring in dharmendra on the same point that you know uh, you talked about 
innovation, uh, you know, gaming sector has been the hub of innovation and growth, uh, Dharminder. And, uh, you know, from a business perspective, you talked about certain of those areas that, you know, what will happen in terms of retaining the customer base and, you know, potential to kind of innovate the strategy around this sector. So, so you know, do you think that uh, the, the industry should be focusing more on the innovation and strategy around how to retain the customer, passing that benefit back to the customer in the way it has been, you know, whatever minimal impact arises on them of this change? Or there is an alternative strategy, which is a combination of both, where there is a different way of thinking about how to really engage with the customer to retain them on their platforms. Sure. So uh, the focus would be now for the sector would be to save costs because the, the revenue or profits uh, are impacted. Now, how should they save costs? See, uh, and, and how should they strategize in terms of so it will be a kind of positive view. I, I would say that internally, these gaming platforms uh, use the games which are developed uh, out of the country. And they, they use it on the license basis and they customize it uh, as per the requirement. They may shift to the development of those games in-house to save costs for the long term. So that will be a kind of good... Uh, possible outcome of, of this initiative. Because right now only customization was happening in India and development was uh, happening outside. So India may further focus on development of all these games in India only. Of course, there'll be a longer term uh, plan in terms of so that the immediate costs are, are not increased. Second, uh, from the payment side, now, customers who are who are getting a higher amount once they were adding funds to the uh, their wallet, how those funding sources can be changed, how new payments methods can be involved, so that uh, they can get uh, the the funding source uh, very easily instead of like right now we can they can add through debit card account base wallet others now what additional funding source can be added so that they do not uh, get discouraged by reduced amount uh, they receive for for play third point is that uh, it's important that uh, uh, that marketing expenditure which were which were i think the uh, it was the gaming sector is a leader in terms of as of in last few years because it was profitable highly profitable so that's why how the marketing expenditure would be would be reduced uh, as they have uh, ongoing contract with the with the leading uh, sporting events or sporting players so it will be important that how should they innovate in, uh, in, in, in their existing contracts and save costs. And also they should also leverage these marketing uh, contracts to spread awareness to the consumers uh, in terms of in case impact is passed, uh, then how uh, should customer behave. And uh, so that awareness drive can be included as part of their uh, their existing marketing activities. And, and fourth point is the retention of the win amount or, it, or uh, how customer may be uh, made aware that the instant gratification behavior, behavior may be discouraged. I'm not saying that it, it may get stopped because if they stop it and other platform is not stopping it, so it will be a competition. But I believe that that as a as a consolidation, uh, uh, the sector will try to uh, reduce the outflow of the uh, win amount. And fifth point, which is really important, that whatever fund is added, the gaming platform may try to increase the uh, usability, like. If you add uh, funds in, in one of the game, you can apply it or it, you can use it on one table. Now, how that amount can be used to multiple tables. So newer formats will be, uh, or exist.
He mm. lies at multiple games in multiple oh. formats. So these are the five points I believe that in terms of innovation, uh, industry will 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 work towards the uh, work towards so that the customer engagement is is not reduced. Thanks, thanks. I hope I was audible. I was trying to just kind of I lost you in the middle, but maybe maybe we're back. So I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Thanks, thanks. So as very validly put, the minute you know, I was just uh, noting the point which you were making and you know relating it to what Ronan was saying. I think the marketing spend, the contracts, the whole ecosystem in which gaming, you know, development happens, all the spends which are there have to be revisited for sure. And all and and obviously it's critical for them to look at all the ongoing contractual arrangements where you know these activities are happening as as you know as a development activity is ongoing. And what will happen to those in terms of renegotiation? What will happen to the way uh, the, the 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 gaming you know the, the gaming you know industry or platform will look at or you know relook at the spend which they will have to do in future once this uh, change is already kicking in? And I think the the other part would be the calculation per se. And I'll bring you know Ronald back there from a calculation perspective. Uh, Ronald, uh, the UI UX uh, you know the the how to it should be a transparent calculation can be demonstrated to kind of customers to avoid grievances and conflicts is something which I thought probably, you know, get a view on that from you. Yeah. So uh, while, uh, you know, the rules are yet to be out and we are, you know, awaiting as, as industry awaiting to see the final print so that, you know, uh, the stakeholders can uh, adopt accordingly. But yeah, I think, you know, we have a precedent of the uh, direct taxation when that came into play a few months back. Uh, at that time, you know, the operators and, and the gaming platforms uh, were able to use both outside of the UI and UX and within the, the UI and UX also uh, uh, communicate very effectively to the, you know, to the gamers on the changes that were uh, adopted and, you know, made law uh, in the direct taxation. So I'm sure that, you know, and uh, the, the operators who are our members and within our ecosystem we have, uh, you know, some of them have already uh, started doing that or in the process of doing that. So, you know, both within the UN, UX and outside of it also. Similarly, for the indirect taxation, uh, GST, uh, also, you know, the, the communication uh, will be very clear uh, so that, you know, the, the stakeholder, the gamer stakeholder particularly, is well informed and, you know, clearly demonstrated on, you know, the impact on, on the gamer ecosystem uh, coming into play with the new regime. Right, I think that will be very, very important. Uh, and you rightly mentioned that, you know, that taking a cue from direct tax changes and the way the communication was done, I think it will be very critical for the the you know industry for the gamers to kind of be aware of what is that change, you know, on an illustrative basis. How does it impact? What is what they need to do? What is what they will have to kind of share? I think these things will become critical once we have utmost clarity in terms of whatever part is remaining. But uh, like you said, at the industry definitely will be also looking at it from their perspective to clarify this upfront so that uh, you know the there is no need of any conflict or you know the the business remains smooth the gamers actually do not get uh, you know they don't suffer from account account of any lack of clarity uh, you know i think uh, that any change which comes with this kind of a you know impact in terms of business changes financial model changes uh, the regulatory change in terms of reporting etc i think from a overall tax and regulatory compliance framework, what are the top two, three things uh, from the reporting standpoint, the main that you see will be you know, most, impact, most, most important for this industry to kind of look at right now? Sure. So in terms of reporting, uh, I believe that uh, in terms of uh, GST reporting, uh, A, uh, to, the, to the authorities, uh, I think the value uh, of uh, the gst amount will get changed uh, otherwise the calculation uh, uh, etc uh, because earlier amount uh, was was different so now the calculations will be uh, changed as per the new regime and will be reported very transparently to government and also from the customer side uh, in terms of systematic changes the i would i would think that uh, the every effort uh, that is required in terms of multi-communication channel through SMS, through in-app notifications, or through terms and condition changes uh, uh, should be kind of, it should be made clear to the customers that how is going to impact them. 
and uh, gaming uh, companies would be very transparent on the on the fund addition page that how much fund if they are adding and how much will it reflect in their uh, wallet and how much will be deducted as gst in case companies ob absorb then how will it be reported to the government it will be important question that suppose uh, company x is actually absorbing and company y is not absorbing so how will it be reported to government that this company has uh, absorbed this as kind of kind of marketing expenditure or or customer retention expenditure uh, and absorbed and it will be paid by the company not by the consumer not passed to the consumer that will be really important to uh, follow that in, uh, if customer is not paying then how is getting reported in the in the scheme or in in their own records uh, of the gaming companies right and and you know that's that's rightly mentioned that uh, the reporting in terms of how if there is any retention or there is anything which ultimately remains in the wallet the transition amount etc all of that has to be reported back because there will be a transition some of that amount will be remaining in the wallets some of that amount like you mentioned if there is a re strategization in terms of the communication that goes to the customers there will be obviously impact that which part of that element of amount has been absorbed in which fashion because gst obviously applies on the gross amount and you know in any other activity which uh, anybody will probably do for a customer there is an element of service and in that element of service you know apart from whatever is exempted and very few of them are exempted most of the activities become a supply so from that perspective a 28% rate applicable on the you know the gaming activity and any other activity alongside which has an 80% gst rate which becomes applicable i think that will also be something which will be on the minds of the you know the industry and the consumer and how that will be passed on and then that will that's where probably the clarity will be required in terms of not only reporting but also the manner in which the compliance will be done and on the compliance side still certain elements remain you know uh, a matter of clarity and you know karan you were talking about some of those areas uh, in terms of uh, how and what happens to the gross valuation in terms of something quality bank as a supply on which 28% gst would be applicable but uh, you know uh, we we talked about and ronald and them in the touched upon the wallet and the amount remaining in the wallet so you know what would ultimately result in a supply you know there is a recharge of wallet money which happens and you know that money is put forth and kept in the wallet what would imply as a supply in that case from a gst standpoint for clarity of the audience so krishan uh, you know while i want to caveat my comments by saying that you know we should wait for the notification to come out but you know what how how we can interpret as the uh, you know law expert is that you know this should be treated to be akin to advance of services it is recharging of wallet whether the player plays or not plays is a subsequent event moment i give the advance to the online platform or you know for the game because the intent is to play, uh, to play the game and you know make money out of that so that should be treated to be advance on which gst on uh, services is uh, you know applicable advance on uh, service uh, you know uh, services gst is applicable so this sh this should have no different interpretation uh, however if there is something else you know what government clarifies only for this gaming industry you know that can be looked into separately but yes uh, as of today you know we can take it that gst will be applicable and tomorrow uh, you know there is a situation a player does not play and uh, he wants to withdraw the money from the wallet in that case the gaming industry will get the adjustment also of the gst which has which must have already been paid so you know it is at par and uh, even the government need not change any gst reporting forms of uh, 1 and 3b you know for these uh, you know online gaming separately so i think one important point would be current to look out for is the clarity in terms of uh, one the incidence is very clear that you know advance will be get taxed what will be important is how that adjustment will be allowed and there will be no questioning on that if we are able to prove that it did, the player did not actually play and sure. for that obviously there has to be some level of documentary evidence some level of evidence in terms of conduct which has to be demonstrated that if there is a inactivity from the consumer side and there is no change in the wallet or no gaming activity took place that record also will be the onus of uh, the gaming industry or the you know platform to kind of maintain so that uh, there is there is an impact of adjustment which comes back to them as a gst because upfront gst would have been paid on that amount if at all that was treated as an advance yeah. but but you know similar thing will arise i think one more area of uh, clarity is probably where you know which will be paramount importance is 
you know, what would be the time of supply where wallet to wallet transfer will take place? You know, the balances are very, very often transferred from one wallet to the other. What happens in that case? Because, you know, at, at the initial stage, maybe GST was already levied. And suppose in that, in that time, some of the activity or the amount was used. Some of that amount is transferred to another wallet. What could be the implication on that? Sure, Krishan. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, the government should clarify on this, but you know, what I can give you immediate reaction to that is, uh, you know, wallet to wallet transfer means that, a, you know, a wallet of a player A, he's transferring some balance to a player B. So, you know, we should take it as that if player B had to probably play the game, he would have, you know, uh, put in that money to uh, and stakes to put in, uh, you know, play the game and GST should have been applicable. Just because somebody is lending that money wallet to wallet, uh, you know, whether that also could be out of the winnings of that uh, person A, whether GST should be applicable or not, you know, there is ambiguity there. Definitely, you know, government should clarify that, you know, what happens in this case. Uh, but to my mind, uh, you know, it, you know, probably if it is a different player, if the wallet is getting transferred, it should be liable to tax. I mean, uh, that's that's a you know very conservative, I would say, view. But yes, you know, there is a clarity, ambiguity around this point. So here, I think there is there is definitely clarity required because uh, in one, on one place, when the actually the first time the money was actually put in the wallet, it was already taxed yeah. at full amount, right? Suppose some of that money, say, out of 100, 10, 10 was used on that uh, the gaming activity happened. The gamer actually used it. Ninety rupees was transferred. You talked about lending, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the player who's actually bringing that money into that, you know, the, the uh, platform, platform money, the money is already there. The transfer happens, the money come back, comes back into the game and that money will be used, used by somebody called a B, a game, you know, player B instead of player A. The incidence of tax which you talked about happened at the time when the advance was there on one side and when the activity of exchange happened and hands money changed, the same money has been used. Either the government has to clarify that the first transaction stopped at that point of time when the 90 rupees was transferred and again when it was used and brought into the wallet of another person it was a fresh supply so 90 rupees is taxed again i think those kind of complications and complexities have to be something which have to be really looked at by the government when the clarification should kind of be issued because uh, these are the things which you know not only impacts the in you know the the actually the platform and the owner but also impacts the customer directly so there have to be absolute clarity that there is no double taxation of this kind of an activity which happens. Right. I think uh, one, one similar probably issue will arise and I think clarity is required, but there will be, you know, Dharminder talked about it, Ronan talked about it, there'll be transition money which will be lying as on the, you know, as on 30th September technically today, assuming 1st October is when the regime actually kicks in. But what would happen to that in terms of the balances which are lying, which will be ultimately used on 1st of October, which were not taxed till now. So, Krishan, uh, you know, similar thing, uh, you know, there is a, uh, as per section 14, there is a, you know, provision when there is a change in rate of taxes. So, I don't think so. There should be any problem to interpret that ra rate. If at all, this wallet money has to be taxed. So, now the moot question is, of course, whether they should be taxed. Because, in you know, if we see the past period till up to 30th September, it is only a wallet money or maybe a winning. You know, whether that really is a full bet amount, is you know something a government should clarify there should be a transition provision to that you know like when gst had been introduced there you know there was excise there was service tax vat there were a lot many transition provisions alongside so similarly for gaming industry also what happens to the money which is lying in or as on 30th of, 30th of september government has to clarify should clarify i would say you know so that uh, you know there is no iota of you know uh, multiple interpretations and leading to litigation uh, you know, for change in rate, I don't have any problem, you know, but whether that is a supply, you know, deeming supply on first itself, just because money is lying in the wallet, you know, there is a, there is a doubt right now. The clarity is definitely required here as well. No, definitely. I think this will become a very important issue to be addressed up front. And, uh, you know, will because that money will be a, used afresh for an activity which has become supply at a full value will happen on, on that date of implementation which is 1st October as of now. And if it is uh, something which does not happen on 1st, even on the date, whenever the transition happens, this issue has to be addressed upfront because this has a larger impact uh, looking at the way, uh, you know, the, the money still lying and not being used and will be used afresh where a change, principle change apply, applies on a particular date. So these transition provisions will have to be interpreted and this issue has to be addressed, uh, you know, very critically. 
I, I think we are very close to the close of this uh, session, but uh, I will ask Ronald for the last question uh, from uh, you know my you know, set of questions which I had and what I've gathered from Q and A. Uh, what is the likelihood? You know, there is a there is a finance minister talked about the reevaluation, uh, Ronald, of uh, the decision and the way the implementation happens. You know, in the span of six months, what what do you think is that revaluation going to be, or what do you think is the expectation of the industry uh, from the government in terms of this revaluation? Re so the announcement of the revaluation obviously is uh, extremely welcome by the industry. Uh, you know, because uh, it gives us another opportunity to to represent. Uh, while there is some ambiguity on what aspects of the, uh, you know, of the uh, GST components would be revaluated, but definitely, as I mentioned at the outset, the rate, uh, you know, is not an issue. The valuation methodology uh, is something that, you know, industry uh, would want uh, to be re-examined. Uh, and, you know, uh, keeping in mind that, you know, uh, industry also uh, grows at, uh, you know, at a decent pace as as it was, uh, you know, in the past, uh, and generating you know revenues for the exchequer as well as you know contributing to the entire nation building and you know job creation, etc. And at the same time, the uh, you know the the uh, department also uh, fulfilled this objective of getting uh, uh, you know more uh, revenues. Now, one way to look at it could be uh, you know on the valuation. Uh, from gross to net deposit, which is uh, definitely much more than you know platform fee. But we we are open to you know discussions and uh, but but as a move, it is extremely welcome. And uh, and I think you know uh, apart from anything else, uh, you know valuation is something uh, is what the industry would uh, want to be re looked at uh, from keeping all these uh, parameters in mind. Right. Right. I, I I know I, I just uh, was reading through the questions which have been posted on LinkedIn as as well as on this uh, Q and A. Uh, one more question for you, Ronald. Uh, uh, you know, people were the, the question was that online gaming activities were happening on an escrow basis, and you know, escrow account was being maintained and parking the user money. So after this implementation, whether the escrow one escrow account will still be required to be maintained? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know. Probably yes. Yeah, exactly. So probably nothing changes on that account because the money is still coming in the same way, right? It's only the the only way the, the calculation uh, will change. Yeah, yeah, correct. Um, I, I I'll have one question for uh, you know Karan uh, on GST side. Uh, probably uh, the question is on uh, account of uh, you know what is basically gonna be the impact uh, of the rate of applicability of platforms such as uh, you know Dream Eleven and others. What is the impact they should look at in the GST front? I think the answer you gave was that you know everybody is impacted by it, provided you're covered in online money money giving activity. But anything specifically on the rate applicability and the overall impact on the platforms? No, Krishan. Nothing changes for Dreams yeah. Eleven specifically. It is it will be uh, you know at par with anybody else in the online gaming industry, uh, online money gaming industry. I would say uh, you know which is going to be 28 percent along with the full value on the bets as of now. Uh, you know, finer prints, you know, please look out for that. Uh, that will be most important to, you know, see and implement in your businesses. Right. And I think you talked about the TDS impact on winning. There's a question, uh, uh, you know, on, on that, that as well, that, you know, on the deposits, uh, what could be the, you know, amount uh, for TDS computation should be inclusive of GST or exclusive of GST for the purpose of calculating the net winnings. I think the part of the answer is to that is that already TDS is only applicable when winning happens, number one. Number two, obviously, should cal be calculated on the net winning. But, but from the from a, I think law perspective, how it is stands for TDS calculation to be made with GST inclusive or not is something which is already there in the in the law. There's nothing different for there's no yeah. different provision for this. Yeah, the life does not change in terms right. of TDS because TDS is anyways calculated on the net winnings, and net winnings is right. nothing but value of the bets minus a total winnings. So that will be the income uh, on which TDS will be applied. Right, uh, right. You know, so GST, anyways, if it is inclusive or exclusive, does not matter because it is on the net amount uh, the TDS goes, and there's no double taxation. Darvinder, I have a question for you. I think we are just closing this. And last two questions I'll take. So I, you talked about uh, strategies of you know you know continuing to acquire, look at innovation, etc. The question which is specifically come is that are gaming companies also looking to partially absorb 
Uh, Ronald talk, talked about it. You talked about it. Partially absorb the impact of GST by offering cashbacks or discount coupons, etc., in some other fashion. So I believe that there will be uh, a response in terms of uh, not passing the complete impact to the consumers. It will be uh, so companies may adopt a phased uh, adoption strategy or part, partly uh, absorbing the impact on them or maybe completely in the initial few months and gradually charging them on this. So if it does not happen, there will be a reduction of the uh, growth uh, or the growth of the sector. Uh, so I believe that the companies will definitely start absorbing uh, the increased amount. Right. And then I think the last one was on cash versus VDS. Karan, you were talking about it and, you know, uh, that there, you, whether the currency is in form of cash or it's another form of, uh, you know, exchange like a VDA, uh, but, but non-monetary benefits, I think is something which uh, is what I can understand of the question. If the companies actually stop paying out in cash and VDS, but rather focus on providing non-monetary benefits, will they still qualify a digital gaming company? I think it's a matter of completely a business change in terms of the way it has been probably the question is, but either of you, Dharmendra or Karan, uh, what is your take on this? Sure, I'll, uh, Dharmendra, I'll take it up. Uh, you know, uh, you know, from GST definition, point of view of consideration, and, you know, especially online money gaming definition, what they have told anything in money or video or, you know, similar kind of uh, instrument, you know, should qualify, uh, you know, for, uh, for charging of GST. However, you know, of course, uh, you know, we will have to see the nature of such non-monetary benefits, you know, which uh, may arise uh, out of, uh, you know, online money gaming. If it is equivalent to money, even that should be considered to be uh, at par with the consideration. However, you know, like you said, Christian, uh, if the model itself is different that, okay, they are not into, you know, online money gaming and it is only online gaming, then uh, the answers are going to be different. Uh, so that needs to be really checked. Precisely. I think that's the difference. Online money gaming and, you know, money game, online gaming and online money gaming has already been kind of, there's a distinction which has already been drawn and money's worth in terms of what is there in terms of VDA any other kind of consideration is already covered as part of consideration, but VDAs have been included as well, specifically akin to money, I would say. And anything akin to money has a, is called, will, will, will it qualify the consideration as something which is already there under the law, which ultimately says that it has to be money's worth, which has to be looked at. So from that perspective, just by changing into any other kind of non-monetary benefit may not be the right kind of, uh, uh, you know, will not change the impact per se. I think that's what probably seems to be what, we are, we are discussing, but it definitely means that business model change from a money gaming activity to something else can be something which can be looked at, but otherwise that cannot be something which can really change the kind of GST implication which we are looking at. I think, I think we have, we have probably exceeded time and uh, I still see almost 60, 70 people still being uh, part, you know, part of this and some on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Uh, for for uh, you know uh, being there till the end and uh, this was really really helpful in terms of uh, the insight shared. Ronald, thank you so much uh, to you from industry standpoint and you know again uh, taking out time for this uh, session. Really insightful. Some of the, your points were really really important. The way it was mentioned, industry will take a lot of cue from there. The mentor from the business inside from the impact standpoint. Thank you so much uh, from bringing in that uh, you know from your side as well. Apologies if I've uh, missed out any. Question, we'll try to address them back uh, by email, et cetera. Uh, I think our email and our, our details were mentioned some on, on the presentation itself. Uh, if somebody can bring it back, uh, it'll be helpful, but uh, happy to kind of uh, share back uh, anything which you would like to ask us, uh, you know, later in time, you can note our email IDs uh, on, on, on the screen and, uh, you know, let us know if you like, require any further clarification and any other further discussion, which we'll be happy to do. Uh, Karan, thank you for uh, sharing the insights while we await a couple of uh, notifications and changes to come into force. We really hope that uh, government would consider an even uh, you know, level playing field for this industry. As Ronald mentioned, that uh, idea is that you know, any change is welcome, provided uh, the, the transparency, the clarity, and the level playing field is something which is uh, maintained 
for the industry ideas not for the industry to kind of you know perish uh, for at least the smaller players or the startups who would be looking at and would have already invested in platforms etc so looking at all of those things uh, you know that's what one would expect and uh, you know our our recommendation to the audience is also that uh, please keep representing in forums uh, you know come back to the association with any further clarity or questions which come up after the you know the, the changes or the notifications are issued but we are always happy to support this uh, these uh, uh, you know these uh, inputs and thank you at you know for that and thank you for joining this session and uh, we'll continue to host such sessions in future as well thank you so much thank and you. have a great evening thank you thank you